Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video today we're going to be talking about birth contracts. Now maybe this is a new term for you, maybe not, but what we mean by birth contracts is when we are still as a soul, so pre-incarnation, what we do is we make a whole bunch of agreements with sometimes thousands of souls about what we'd like to experience while we're here on earth in a physical body. And a lot of these things are, if you will, can be contained within what we call our birth contract. Now, at a certain point during your journey, you might well become curious as to what your birth contract is. So what we'd like to do in this video and the next video for Mario is to give you an idea of how we found out what our birth contract is because we do know to a large degree at least what our birth contract is and our life's goal if you will our purpose for being here now with me um, it started out oh I think about eight nine maybe ten years ago I'm not really sure so uh, don't hold me to that date, but I started looking back at my life at the high points and sometimes the low points too. And as I started looking at it, I started to realize that there was a pattern there. And I'm going back to even when I wasn't, if you will, awakened. I looked at the way my life had developed along certain lines. Um, Throughout my life, I've always been a leader, whether it was in sport, um, whether it was in um, marketing, um, or whether it was in school activities, or whether it was in community activities. I've always been one of those people that was willing to step up to the plate and take a leading role. Yes. And when I realized that, I realized also then, yes, this has all been leading to a certain point in my life and my life's goal, the end goal, if you will, of why I'm here. And having noticed that, I started looking for other patterns that I could recognize. And um, yeah, of course, the main one was the leading, the, the leading light, if you will, the leading figure. But another one was um, I happened to follow a course. Um, I was doing a lot of network marketing at that time and I decided, decided to take a course on public speaking and I can remember, you know, even though we were all in a group and we were all learning the same thing, um, even in front of them, every time I had to speak in front of that audience of my, you know, my colleagues, my knees were shaking, my body was shaking, my voice was shaking, everything was shaking. So it was a strange concept to start off with. And um, now these days I stand up in front of a hall with 300 people, a thousand people. It doesn't matter anymore. I love doing it. So somehow or other I've got used to it. But I saw even back then, and again, I wasn't awakened. I was doing it for another purpose. But I saw that even then I was being trained or prepared, if you will, to do what I'm doing now. Now I do public speaking, but I do it now for spirituality. Yes. We teach what, we, what we've learned. Um, so there was another huge clue as to what I'd be doing in the future. Now, of course, I, I was a very, very good, if you will, salesman. So I've got the gift of the gab. As we say in England, I have the gift of a speaker. Apparently, I also learned back then to, yeah, to enunciate, to verbalize in such a way that it would keep people's interest. And of course, um, in fact, actually, it was said of me at a certain point in my journey that I could sell ice to Eskimos. Now, there's a good one. <laughs> ice to Eskimos, yeah. Um, so that means I was pretty good at what I did. But also, and I've experienced this myself, in fact it was um, while I was in America, I was placed in front of a group of people that had been coming together for 30 odd years doing um, 
these kind of studies and they'd heard a heck of a lot of speakers during the years. So it was for me it was certainly a baptism of fire. Um, and certainly in the beginning I had a little bit of difficulty because I was kind of trying to tell a little bit about myself, um, where I'd come from, how I'd come to that point. Well, boy, they weren't interested in that and they sure shot me down in flames. <laughs> but the beautiful thing about that, immediately with this extremely aware group, I just started to tell the story of how I was influenced in a certain subject and then all of a sudden I realized that there was a switch because I was talking about something that they were interested in, something that they wanted to hear about. Actually, it was a talk on Twin Flames, as I remember rightly. And they wanted to know how I'd got to that point of recognizing my Twin Flame, uh, being with my Twin Flame, what for an experience it was. And I noticed that once I changed to that topic, I had them all hanging on my every word. So they were extremely interested and that baptism of fire became an extremely beautiful experience for me because I learned at that point that I could do it, that I could captivate my audience and that I could actually have them listening intently to what I had to tell. So there was another beautiful high point in my own birth contract journey, only this time it was indeed in spirituality, I had awakened. Um, and another part of this particular section was, and you've heard us doing it, in fact we've mentioned it in one of the previous videos, we often use our voices. Yes. And sometimes, especially if you ever come to one of our talks, you'll find that sometimes if I feel that the audience, that I might be losing them, I lower my voice. That you really have to use your ears to listen to what I'm saying. And sometimes if I want to announce or, or really hit home a point, I'll use my voice to project it outwards and I'll grab their attention again that way. So I've learned to play. Oh, and I love that. We love that. We love to play with our audience. So here we are again. This was another of the points of my life. Certainly during a period when I wasn't awakened that I learned to play with my voice. And I learned also, while I was awakened, during talks and things like that, that in using my voice, that I could really reach out and grab their attention, if you will. And also, not only that, the sound of my voice, the tones that I use, elongating sometimes some words, it had somehow or other, it had draw them in closer to me. And I've taught you this as we've gone through our journey together, and, and you do it now a lot as well. But we notice that how it is a beautiful game. And I, I use the word play in absolute total respect because it's a wonderful game that we play together. It's the audience and I interacting with each other, playing a game of learning, expanding together. So this was another high point that showed me, if you will, that yes, at a certain point in my journey, I would become this spiritual teacher, this spiritual guide, leader, or whatever you want to call it. And that is absolutely my purpose here on earth, to be this leading light, helping others, my brothers and sisters around the world, to awaken to new levels of what we are. We are way much more than that we think we are inside our heads. And boy, we're sure learning a lot of great stuff. I'm bringing some great stuff out in the Shambhala Oneness course and the Oneness activations. So that is my purpose here on earth. That is my birth contract. And I dare to say that if you look back at your life at the high points and the low points and you make little notations for yourself on paper, you'll start to see a pattern forming. And it's that pattern that will give you your clues to your birth contract. Have fun with it. Enjoy it because it is a lot of fun and it certainly gives you a great more, great deal more insights. Um, it helps you, helps you relax in life. Yes. Uh, instead of being in resistance, you can just go with the flow. Surrender. Mm -hmm. Surrender. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you are, folks. That's Ian's birth contract. I trust that this has helped you in some way or other to find your birth contract. Have fun with it. And thank you for listening. This time to me. Now it's her turn. Mm -hmm.
Namaste. Namaste.